Hello, my name is Lisa O'Connell and I'm going to cover some study skills for adults returning to learning. So the aim of this little presentation is to show you the various issues that arise when you are returning to learning. To introduce learning strategies to help your ability to learn and to give you confidence with regards to study. I hope after this you will reflect on the challenges associated with returning to learning and that your awareness will be erased concerning the unique nature of adult learning that you will get an opportunity to reflect on the key aspects of effective learning and that you'll develop a method of reading, writing and using time for learning that suits you. So the challenges of returning to learning. As a trainer, I often see that learners, particularly older learners returning to learning, may feel a lack of confidence, especially if they spend some time out of education. They might have feelings of not belonging, of being out of place or being alone. They may have had negative experiences of school. So many people's perceptions of school can be based on past negative experiences and they may fear, fear excuse me, they may fear a repeat of the same thing. Other commitments, many adult learners fear that they may not have time with the other commitments in their lives, such as families and sports, etc. The characteristics of an adult learner. Adults are usually motivated to learn as they experience needs and interests that require learning. They usually need to put their learning to immediate use. Learning in adulthood is oriented towards problems of life and so adults tend to apply what they have learned to real life situations promptly. Experience can be the richest resource of an adult learner. Their vast own experiences. Each of the aspects of adult learning are closely linked to the issues of confidence. Many adults have had a lot of fear and anxiety when returning to the learning atmosphere. This, however, can be seen as a good thing as it's motivational and it motivates expected learners to develop new capacities within themselves. Effective learning. This brings us to our next point. What is effective learning? An effective learner is a learner who is active and strategic, is skilled in cooperation, is able to develop plans and goals and monitors his or her own learning. The characteristics of effective learning are that the person has skills and strategies, that effective learning is not dependent on having a high IQ. If you have the motivation, then you have the drive required to learn, grow and develop. There is no one method of learning that fits everyone. We grow and develop daily, so it's important for you to be aware of your own preferred learning method, energy levels and needs for support. Learning demands a certain level of openness. You'll be required to enter into a process of looking at your own ways of thinking, looking at the world and even doing your job. You will need to consider whether there is a new way to do or look at things. Having and being. There are two different modes most students or learners will be in. The having students will listen to a lecture, take notes, understand the logic and the meaning of the learning off the notes to pass, say, the exam. However, being students or being learners will engage with the learning and respond in an active, productive way. You will need to consider the following, the availability of time and space. You should create a timetable as this will aid you in balancing learning with personal uh, activities. Being organised is just as vital to use your time wisely. This is so that the study will be productive. One should follow the routine of reviewing what has already been studied, concentrating on note taking and writing, reflecting on the impact of what you're studying is having on you and plan ahead for your next study period. Knowing your own rhythms of rest and activity. It's important to be flexible with your rest times. If you continuously force yourself to concentrate when you're tired, you'll become exhausted and disinterested. Tuning into yourself can help. While being hard on yourself can sometimes force a better effort, we can find ourselves being overly critical of our efforts. Developing an awareness of yourself is important. Good study habits. Once you decide what to study and for how long, stick to it. 
Do the most difficult tasks first as they will require the most mental energy. Choose a place to study that has adequate lighting, good air conditioning and where you have access to necessary materials. Study for 50 minutes and then take a 10 minute break and try and move around during your break. Allow longer time periods for bigger activities such as writing papers. Use shorter time periods for smaller activities such as self-testing. If you get tired or bored, switch topic, environment or subject. Stop studying when you are no longer making progress. Practice rote memory tasks just before you fall asleep to solidify details. Study with a friend can be useful. You can practice quizzes and compare notes. This may point out areas where you are strong or struggling. These are some common study traps that people experience. I don't know where to begin. So just make a list of things you have to do. Break the list down to smaller chunks and schedule time and prioritise. I've got so much to study and so little time. Review the syllabus or the learning outcomes and pick out the most important topics. Emphasise the main topics. This material is boring. I can barely stay awake reading it. Actively involve yourself with the material. Take notes, discuss the topic with others in your class and ask yourself questions about it. I have read and understood the material, but it just won't sink in. In this case, try to elaborate on what you're learning. Link it to what you already know, as it will help with remembering it in the future. There's just too much to remember. Organize your notes. Writing summaries of chapters can help with establishing and remembering relationships between sections. I knew it yesterday. Review the material and test yourself constantly. If you struggle with certain sections, focus on them. I need to stay up all night to learn this. Really do avoid mental exhaustion. Give yourself adequate breaks. And if you're making no progress, end your study for the day and relax. So learning skills involve note taking, writing and communication and reading. I know myself that the only way I learn as an individual is note taking and then summarizing and rewriting the notes. If there's a process involved, it helps me to doodle the process and literally take the process through one box after another and taking it through its journey so I can draw a picture of what's intended that I learn. Each individual will have their own systems of learning and they'll know what works best for themselves. So it's important to experiment to get to understand what works best for you. Reading. So choose carefully what you read. There's no read, need to read everything if you're looking for specific information. It can help if you're on a website or on a, public, uh, on a published material online to use Control F. That's holding down Control on the bottom left hand side of your keyboard and pressing F. This will open up a little box that you can put in a keyword to see whether it appears in the text. Reading less can often help you understand more Skimming a book can reduce the information going in. Ask yourself regularly if you understand what the author is trying to say. Taking notes is a critical part of reading as you have a record of what you have read and it may help with recollection. It's also important that you take or jot down where you're finding the different information that you're studying so that you can go back to that book or source if you need to. Always ask yourself the impact something is having on you. The reading process, scan the material that needs to be read, put it in order of read now, read later, reference, option to read and not relevant. This will save time later. Scope, this is deciding why you're reading the material. Set aside time to read through the material thoroughly, highlighting and taking notes as needed, especially quotes which may be later useful. Recall, check what you've learned by jotting down what you've read and review, look over the work you've completed, put the notes in order and plan what to do during your next study period. Keeping a learning journal. It can be useful to have a learning journal while studying. This will be a journal in which you write down your thoughts, feelings and learning experiences. Many important insights can arise from writing down your thoughts and having them side by side on paper. 
There is a system called the Cornell system that covers note taking. It's a system used for taking notes designed to save time but remaining highly effective. The three steps are preparation, process and postscript. Before class, take a large notebook using only one side of the paper. Your notes can then be laid out to see the direction of the lecture. Draw a vertical line 2.5 inches from the left hand side of the paper. This is the recall column and after the notes are taken, key words can be noted. During class, write down your notes in paragraphs, capturing as many ideas and use abbreviations if necessary. Ensure your writing is legible. Postscript. As soon as possible after the class or lecture, have a read through your notes and make them legible if not already. Jot down key words and ideas and add your own reflections. Cover the notes column and recall them as much of the lecture as you can in the recall column. The reason we try to edit our lecture notes as soon as possible after the lecture is because the lecture is still fresh in your mind, making it easier to recall the facts and examples you didn't have time to read, sorry, to write during the lecture or class. You can also consult with a classmate or lecturer if there are parts of the lecture that are still unclear. Immediately reviewing notes promotes better retention of information. If you review your material after 24 hours, you're relearning rather than reviewing. Some note taking tips include underlining key statements or important concepts, using a highlighter, using different signs like an asterisk to indicate the importance of a point, use a key and a summary. Condensing notes not only helps you learn but prepares you for the thinking required for essays, assignments and exams. Free writing. The technique of free writing is designed to help with overcoming the anxiety that may halt creativity. The learner writes for a set period of time without worrying about mechanics or conventions. It is similar to brainstorming, but is written in sentence and paragraph form. Free writing is something I used to do in college to help me um, continue, continuously write pieces. I would fall into the trap of writing the sentence and reading the sentence and writing the sentence and reading the sentence. And sometimes that got in the way of what I actually wanted to write, the free flowing idea. So to overcome this, I'd put a sheet of paper over the screen of the computer so I couldn't see what I had written. And I would just type for, say, five, ten minutes and then allow myself to read back over what I'd written. This stopped me from rereading the paragraph again and again, which got in the way of progress. Although free writing is useful for releasing creativity, your writing will need to be organised in order to communicate your message effectively. This involves the following process. Have it clear in your mind what you want to say. Keep focused on your task. Be aware of the audience you are speaking to as this will determine the factors such as the level of formality. And say what you need to say using simple but effective language. Organising your writing. Examine your essay topic carefully. Free write, brainstorm or create a mind map using various sources of information relating to the topic. Research your topic. Choose appropriate material and try to understand the argument presented as best you can. Ensure to take detailed notes and having completed your research, brainstorm, mind map or free write again, grouping similar ideas under various headings. Planning and writing essays. Introduction. The introduction should set the scene for the essay by making a statement of intent. You must state what you're going to say and how you're going to say it and what the reader should gain having read your essay, a bit like I did at the start of this presentation. The body of the essay. The body should do one or all of the following. Develop the point by point the argument which you wish to make to address the topic. Refer constantly to research and ideas that you've read about and use quotations to support the point you are making. It's important that you use Harvard referencing here, and there's another little help video available to you from us on that. Conclusion. In your conclusion, you should summarize the argument presented. And bibliography, this is a comprehensive list of all the materials, articles, and books which you have consulted and referred to and quoted. 
You may be given subheadings for your essay by your tutor. If so, please use them in the correct order. Mind maps. Mind maps use association and association plays a vital role in almost every mental function. Every single word and ideas has numerous links attaching it to other words and ideas. Mind maps are an effective method of note taking developed by Tony Buzan. To make a mind map, you start in the center of the page with a mind, well, sorry, with the main idea and you work outwards in all directions. I have an example on the next slide, producing an organized structure composed of keywords and images. Its key features are organization, association, visual memory, keywords, clustering and outstandingness. So here is an example of a mind map where you take the key concept and put it in the middle of the page and then you take the ideas and those ideas might have sub ideas again. So these slides have set out some learning strategies that will help you on your learning and study journey. However, these skills will only be developed through practice. Refer back to these slides, especially in times where you're experiencing difficulty. Believe in yourself and best of luck on your journey.